Another week of beautiful football ready to keep you on the edge of your seat. The league leaders looking to rebound after their slaying last week. Which side will grab the headlines this week? Time to find out. This is the J1 League Goal Zone. Urawa and San Frecce got things going for match week 13. Kashima at home to welcome Consadole. Bottom side Kobe looking to find a way out of their troubles had Tosu to contend with, while Shonan had their hands full against the visiting Marinos. Urawa could only manage a draw on their return to the league, making it their fourth in a row. They'd be hoping to go six unbeaten, but it would be no mean feat against the San Frecho side, who had just toppled the leaders last week. Rish Roshan Rai has your commentary. Mawatari, he's got decent quality with his delivery, it's gone all the way in. Just aiming towards that far post, Kazuaki Mawatari, that's his second goal of the season. Let's have another look at that. It is Iwanami, just making a run in front of him across the goalkeeper's eye line. This is uh, the case, VAR will be looking at that. It is going to be such a tight call. Whether it's come off his arm. Well, that's what they're looking at, it appears to be. Just leaning offside, in fact, uh, the goal has been chopped off. Incredibly harsh. Onishima. Shot from distance. And that dip is causing a bit few issues for Nishikawa. That free kick's taken quickly. Sekine helps it on to Moberg. Big opportunity here for Urawa. Carves out space for a shot, Moberg. But that's really good goalkeeping by Keske Osako. It's really good work by Akimoto. To win it back, and Urawa can burst forward here. Fresh legs in Esaka. He's got Junke on the outside of him. Gives it to Kasper Junke. And his angle towards the far post. Charge down and close down. Moberg, Maotari, Isaka, plenty of power behind that hit from Mataru Isaka. He's not taking any chances, plenty of power behind that strike, decides to palm it over. Good swung in with decent pace, cleared away by Junior Santos, shot comes in from range by Matsuo. Excellent goalkeeping from Osako. And that's it, the referee, Junpei Iida. Blows the final whistle on an entertaining contest between Urawa Reds and San Frecce Hiroshima. Plenty of shots in this match. It ends here at the Saitama, Urawa Reds nil, San Frecce Hiroshima nil. Jubilo's poor form continued as they suffered another loss last time out, leaving them with just one win in their last nine. Making it difficult for them to improve on that record, sixth place Tokyo were in town to shake off their recent back-to-back -back losses. A quiet first half until the 43rd minute, when Rikia Uehara picked out Yuto Suzuki on the edge of the box, and his side-footed finish put Jubilo 1-0 up at the half. Ten minutes after the break and a Jubilo corner makes contact with Makito Ito at the near post, his glancing header across the face of the goal, and none of his teammates could get a touch on it. Seconds later, at the other end of the field, Shuto Abe comes bursting through, but he can't beat Ryuki Miura. It was end-to-end -end stuff, and only moments had passed before Fabian Gonzalez was on the break. Defenders slumping all around him, he manages to round Jakob Slowik, but by that time the angle was too acute, and his shot ended up in the side netting. Stand by for your first candidate of goal of the week. Kazuya Kono on a mazy run down the right-hand side. He squares it to a Dialton, who takes a touch. And how about that for a finish from the Brazilian? So it's 1-1 with just minutes to go. Tokyo's Diego Oliveira gets the return ball from Ryoma Watanabe, but he can't quite get enough on the shot, and that one's smothered by Mura in goal. There was, though, still time for the deadlock to be broken. 
After a long ball upfield, Suzuki crosses this one to find Naoki Kanuma. And what a cool finish that is for Jubilo to take the lead once again and collect all three points. Another side struggling at the bottom, Nagoya's win the streak stood at six after defeat in their last contest. But having lost just once in 15 at home, they'd be banking on home advantage to get the better of Cerezo, who'd gone six games on the road without a loss. And predictably then, it was Nagoya who got the early breakthrough. Kea Sento beating the offside trap. He makes a firm connection, but Kim Jin Hyun in goal needed to do much better than that. Cerezo then looking to make amends here just before the half hour mark. Ryosuke Yamanaka squares the ball to Hiroshi Kiyotake on the edge of the box. He hits it first time, but not nearly well enough. And that's a comfortable collection for Langerak in goal. Four minutes later and Nagoya thought they'd gone two up. A smart move down the left hand side. Noriyoshi Sakai finds Mateus, who puts the ball into the net, but upon review, it was quite clear that Sakai had just been a little too eager, jumping ahead of the defensive line, and he was flagged for offside. Early in the second half here, and Cerezo fans must have thought that their club had found an equaliser. John Patrick squares the ball into the danger zone, and how Adam Taggart didn't make a connection on that, only he will know. Gifted that wonderful piece of good fortune, the remaining minutes enabled Nagoya to try and find a second. Mateus again causing trouble, finding Leo Silva, who dragged his shot just wide. And then moments later, when Ryotaro Ishida broke down the right and put in a decent cross for Mateus to touch into the net. It turned out that Ishida had just strayed into his opponent's half before the ball was played. So that one also ruled out and the home team win by just a goal to nil. No wins in their last three and Kyoto's engines seem to have sputtered to a halt after their flying start to the season. Their opponents saw their five game unbeaten run ended by Kawasaki last time, but Shimizu could be in a good position to bounce back here. Shazad Hak with your commentary. Good work done the left hand side there from Yamahara. Referee sees no problem with that. That shot straight at the keeper from Miyamoto. Terrific attack there from Shimizu Espals. Suddenly they come steaming forward here. And the shot. Again, straight at Kami Fukumoto. Otaka. Again, waiting to pull the trigger, which he does. Grabs hold of the ball quickly on the rebound. But how did he manage to get a shot away? It's really impressive. Now Otaka. He's looking for support. He's still going on his own. Still going, Yutaka. Slipped the ball through. First time the shot was taken by Takatomi. Now, Yutaka. Crowd trying to do their bit here. Last spot. Chance here. Oh, that is a glorious opportunity from Yamada. A decent save from Suichi Gonda. Good work here from. Utaka. Suzuki was careful not to foul him. So enough conviction in the shot. Oh, he knows that was a chance. Got to get it upfield. I think the referee's going to blow it for time. There's a lot of huff and puff from both these sides, particularly in the first half. And full time score here at the Sangha Stadium by Kusera. It's Kyoto Sangha nil, Shimizu Espel still. Coming off the back of a disappointing loss, Kashima needed a big performance to keep their place at the top. A tricky task ahead of a Kotsudole side that had lost only once all season and were also unbeaten in their last five, with all five clean sheets to boot.
but their prospects of getting a clean sheet in this one was blown away after only six minutes. A poor defensive clearance meant that Kashima regained possession, and as the ball worked its way towards the penalty area, Ayase Ueda stayed on side, swiveled, and hit that with his right foot first time. 1-0 to the home team. Just four minutes later and the visitors' goal was threatened once again. Yuta Higuchi with a teasing free kick, on which his teammates couldn't get quite enough of a touch. But it wasn't long before Kashima came pouring forward once again. Higuchi picking out Arthur Kaike, whose left-footed shot across the face of the goal. Predictably though, it wasn't long before the home team got their second. Another fine ball threaded through the Sapporo defence. Kaiki runs onto it, collides with Takanori Sugeno in goal. The big question is, was the foul committed inside the penalty area? The referee showed Sugeno a yellow card and yes, pointed to the penalty spot. But captain Yuma Suzuki stepped up, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way and now it's 2-0. 35th minute now and there's no stopping Kashima. Koki Anzai with a delicious cross. Ueda jumps high, his header grazes the top of the crossbar. But before the half-time whistle, they would get their third goal. Kaiki breaking down the right, pulls the ball behind all of the runners except Suzuki, who'd hung back. And that's a very smart finish into the bottom right-hand corner. The host's swashbuckling football continued early in the second half. Ueda, though, unable to get a firm enough connection on that opportunity. But it still all seemed to be a little bit too easy for the home team. Higuchi from the dead ball, Kaiki rises highest, and that's 4-0 to the league leaders. Three minutes later, though, and the opportunity for a counterpunch. From the corner, Daihachi Okamura glances this one wide. From a corner of their own in the 65th minute, Kashima had another chance. Kim Min Tae's header well saved by Sugeno and a follow-up wasted. Having been on the end of something of a battering all game, Hokkaido managed to find some consolation in the 69th minute. And it was another candidate for goal of the week. Daiki Suga picking up the ball on the left-hand side, cuts in, and that's some strike with his right foot. But the Antlers win this one 4-1. A resounding win for the Antlers to consolidate their position at the top of the table. The rest of the chasing pack are up next. Find out if they keep the heat on the leaders when we return. Back here on the J1 League Goal Zone, nobody does it like us. All the top highlights and goals from the best league in Asia. There's no better place to be right now as we take you through the rest of Match Week 13. Vissel, deep in misery, had another tough game on the cards against Sagan this week. The hosts hadn't won all season, while the visitors had been incredibly hard to beat, boasting the stingiest defence and just one defeat to their name. But what a magnificent start for Kobe. Gotoko Sakai takes this one down expertly, squares the ball to Andres Iniesta, and you don't expect him to miss from there. It was a nightmare start for Sagan Tosu. Here in only the 14th minute, Yoshinori Muto steals the ball, lays it off to Iniesta, who finds Koyo Yuruki, and that's 2-0 into the second half and Sagan looking to make amends. The ball comes over, Yuji Ono gets a touch on it and that is the save of the weekend from Daya Maikawa. A magnificent stop that re-established the home team's momentum. As ever, Iniesta causing trouble, lays the ball off to Sakai, who chips the ball over everyone's head except Muto, who volleys home the third. By the 91st minute, it was exhibition stuff from Vissel Kobe. Bojan Kerkic supplies Yuya Osako. Park Ilgu is beaten all ends up. 
And that's a decisive first home win of the season. Over at the top, Kawasaki made its successive wins and now had just lost once in nine. Looking to keep the pressure on the Antlers, the champions would be favoured to take their third win in a row against the visiting Avispa, who came into this one on the back of a draw against Shona. Just touch back and that's a nice little one-touch football. And that continues, the cross comes in. And the goalkeeper didn't know too much about that. As Marcinho raced in to get a foot to it. The connection was at very close quarters. There's the run from Martinho. Lined up along the edge of the penalty area, considerably more. Defensive shirts. Looking to keep them in check. In comes the ball. And it's headed on nicely and a good save by the goalkeeper. Masaki Murakami managed to just foil that header of Shogo Taniguchi. The attendance of the person marking them is too close comfort. Douglas Crawley's probably done a good job of that. Oh, an opportunity there and it's fired in. The ball played through very nicely indeed. There he is, the number 19, unmarked at that point. They didn't pay attention to him, did they? And when the ball was put through, he was onside. First time hit it with that right boot into the roof of the net. The captain's up there, Taniguchi, right-footed, and the header comes in. It's Shintaro Kuromaya, and within a matter of moments, Kawasaki Frontale are now 2 0 up. The jump with him from Tatsuki Nara was half hearted at best. He's swung in by Jordi Crew, so in swinging, immediate problems for Jung Sung Ryong in goal. Here it comes over his head to the far post where Douglas Crawley was watching, headed on and tipped onto the crossbar. Tatsuki Nara got his head to the ball, and the goalkeeper. It was the second phase after Grolli had picked the ball up at the back stick. And again, it was reflex, wasn't it? Again, space, Miyagi, who's been another good substitute for Kawasaki. Schmidt's little clip towards the far post. Did find the head on the teammate, but safely into the hands of the goalkeeper. And that will be enough for the referee and his stopwatch, who blows the whistle. Final score here. And the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium is Kawasaki Frontale 2, Avispa Fukuoka 0. Another side hot in the title race, the Marinos, were also on the prowl for a third successive win as they travelled to Shonan. The hosts were on the opposite end of the spectrum, just one win under their belt and deep in relegation water. Here's Glenn Mascarenas. Oh, almost a lovely pass there, but F Marinos the defence holding strong here. Well, the intent from Belmari, very clear. And that's a decent save. And what an effort there. So, Sean and Belmari. And uh, Kokitachi uh, will continue playing. We've got another lap from F. Marinos. She's got to worry. Well, beautifully done there once again, and that is touch and go, yo. Another save from Yohei Takaoka. Yoka. There's Anderson Lopez. And that's straight through! What a shot! Kota Mizunoma, right place at the right time. Takes matters into his own hands after Anderson Lopez. Well, was just ambushed and foiled a couple of times over. Kota Mizunoma, it's 1-0, Yokohama at Marinos. Yeah. Here's Nakagawa. Marcos. Oh, that would have been difficult, and what a goal that is! Absolutely marvellous play. Smart thinking on the part of Marcos. Lovely back pass. I just read that so well. Koike. Just scoop that into the target. It's 2-0, Yokohama at Marinos. And struggled through. G1 and G2, and shuffled many times. Just Nakagawa, moving ahead with intent. Gets it to Mizunoma, and Anderson Lopez! Finally hits the target. Lovely play there from 
the sailors of Yokohama. Mark Osroll just picking it up there before the half line, gets it to Nakagawa. That's a fantastic sprint from Nakagawa, who decided to send it through to Mizunoma instead of Lopez. Lopez positioning himself right before the target. Just a touch is all it needed from Lopez. 3-0, Yokohama F. Marinos. Pass from Wellington, and that's another beautiful save. That should have been a goal. Shooter Machino denied. Well, Wellington missing out on it entirely. And this could be a tad bit dangerous here. And Wellington finally hits the target. That's his first goal of the season in his 11th game, and he's moved to tears. Well, that needed a finish, and Takaoka just caught out of position in that scramble. Lovely assist from Satoshi Tanaka. So 3-1. It's now 4-1. Well, did get ahead to it and only helped in assisting Sierra further. Leo Sierra, well, just kept his pace, kept his school. So, it's really Yokohama and Marinos who will walk away with the spoils here and a commanding and convincing victory. So, full time. It's Shonen Belmari 1, Yokohama F. Marinos 4. Kashiwa had lost some of their ground in the title race recently, but they'd been looking to make it three unbeaten as they took on Gamba. The away side most recently picked up a win against Kobe, and with just one loss on the road so far, they could come away with the goods here. And trying to deliver on that, they had the first chance of the game in the 12th minute. As soon as Hiroto Yamami took his touch, you knew he was going to try and chip the goalkeeper, but his effort just off target. The first big chance for Kashiwa came 10 minutes later. From the free kick, Mateus Savio hits the post. Another opportunity came for them in the 42nd minute. Sachiro Toshima playing Mao Hosoya through, but his second touch was a heavy one. Too close to the goalkeeper, Jun Ichimori, and it was goalless at the break. It was a deep 71st minute corner that finally broke the deadlock. Kwon Kyung Won sending the ball back, and Dohan fires through a crowded penalty area to put Gamba 1 0 up. Another deep corner seven minutes later almost gave them a second. Yota Sato attacking that one but straight down the throat of Kim Seung-gyu. Agony for the home fans as here in the 96th minute, Taiyo Koga lofts a ball into the box. Hiromu Mitsumaru gets his head to it, but it comes back off the post and the visitors take all three points in this one. Match week 13 results then, two goalless draws in Saitama and Kyoto, while Nagoya picked up a clean sheet and three points at home against Cerezo. Kashima put four past Consadole to pick up the win, and Kobe also managed four of their own to collect their first victory of the season. Kawasaki beat Avispa 2-0, while the Marinos were equally formidable in Shonan, 4-1 winners in the Kanagawa derby. A resounding win for the Antlers, and they stay top of the table on 28 points. Kawasaki keeping the pressure on just two points shy in second. The Marinos added to their tally of goals and keep the pace in third. San Frecce moving steadily up, taking sixth with 18 points. Nagoya doing the same at the bottom half of the table, up to 13th now and inching further away from the danger zone with Jubilo on the same number of points. Vissel finally got their act together and picked up three points to take them out of last place, but are still not out of danger yet. 
We hope you enjoyed all the action here from the Meiji Yasuda J1 League. You know where to find us for more of the same. I'm Steve Dawson, and we'll see you next time on the J1 League Gold Zone.